Um, I'd next like to invite uh, Gwen Scottman to share with us. She's a wife, mother and a grandmother. She's a consumer and has been on her recovery journey for 23 years. She's also a carer. For 12 years she worked as a consumer advocate in mental health, uh, public mental health services. She has a strong background in systems advocacy and was the former state delegate and deputy chair for the Australian Mental Health Consumer Network. She's also served on a wide range of committees over the years. She currently works for GROW Residential Rehabilitation Service, uh, which is a service for people who live with mental illness and substance abuse. I'm not as organised as Paula, I'm sorry. Um, <laughs> I don't remember much of my childhood. I do have the occasional memory, and the ones I have aren't rare. Some, most of them aren't healthy. But I didn't think that really impacted on me. I, um, I discovered alcohol when I went nursing, alcohol and blokes, it was wonderful. I didn't, my first awareness of trauma was in my 20s, and it was more than just trauma, it was torture and trauma under the true definition of the word. And that went on for 10 years. During that time, I tried suiciding a few times, um, saw mental health services who just tried to give me medication. I was telling them about the trauma, but they said, all you need is medication. So I just said, what did you know? And walked away. So my access to services was, well, I didn't have access to services because I was not prepared to um, access a service that wasn't looking at the whole of me. At about this time, I was also doing holistic studies, and I thought this is not the way to work with people. So I chose to go off my own merry little path. During the various journeys, I was just thinking, Kathy was talking about not being emotionally there for people. Well, one of the um, labels that I got given was that I had isolation of affect. Right. Um, because I was not showing appropriate emotion for what was happening in my life at that time. And I think that was no acknowledgement of what was happening and the overwhelming things that were happening. One of the things I learned from the consumer movement was that um, there's no such thing as problem people. There are people with problems. That I never needed to work with a diagnosis, I could work with a person. And, and that's the difference. And so people would come and say, well, you know, this newspaper wants to do a, an interview with somebody with schizophrenia for Schizophrenia Awareness Week. And I thought, well, I don't know anybody with schizophrenia. And I didn't. Or they wanted schizophrenia. It's more of a, I don't know any schizophrenia. I worked with people. Um, in 1990, I got sober in 1988. Um, my partner, I moved from being in an abusive, physically abusive relationship to one where I was in an emotionally abusive relationship with an alcoholic who has himself huge childhood trauma issues. And one of the concerns has been for me and for him is that in AOD services, they treat the AOD and the mental health is just left. Um, but all this time what had been happening is, um, I was sober, but I was still mad as a cut snake. You know, they talk in AA about came to believe power, the greater than us could restore us to sanity. Mate, I was totally insane, totally totally just reacting to everything. I didn't know how I still cope with life. Okay, So many times I, re I hear people described as being manip manipulative, acting out, but for many people they're the coping mechanisms that helped us to survive. Mm. Without them we would never have survived to our 20s, our 40s and done what we had to do. Anyway, I found Grow, or more to the point, Grow found me. And one of the huge things that made a difference for me and that GROW offered me was what was called their essential spiritualities, relief in persons. Finally, after being labelled by parents, family, services, because um, I have a pretty um, strong tongue a way of dealing with things. Um, that's being polite because we're a mixed company. <laughs> so after being labelled as a troublemaker, um, I still am, aren't I, Paul? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, I finally found somebody who, an organisation of people who believed in me. And the very first thing they offered me from their program was hope. They believed that I was worth something. 
and you know, and I mean that was really important to me. When I did what are they call a step four in AA or or grow, and I had to do a personal inventory, and I come up with three good lines, three lines of good things, and three pages of bad things about myself, and all the masks came off because I was a very accomplished person. I was a registered nurse. I was tra trained, tra mostly trained in traditional Chinese medicine. You know that I could do an internship in China. Uh, I ran a bit organic business, blah, 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 blah. so I was very accomplished. But I totally went to pieces when I realised how little I know, how little good, little good there was in me. And somebody came up to me and they gave me a piece of paper on which they had written down half a dozen things that they had seen about me. And I thought, if somebody else can see that, that's I can't be all bad. And that was the start of my journey. <coughs> And so I've made a point of whenever I went to an inpatient unit, if I was working with people on what were their goals, trying to find one good thing that I would share with them. Um, the other thing that was really is really good about Grow is that as part of um, coming to Grow in the Grow groups, they, there's a chance in the meeting where you can tell your story of suffering or need that led to Grow. And that allowed me to verbalise the trauma that I had come from and to have people work with me on that. Another thing that I really like about working in GROW is that we have what we call with relationships. To do something to somebody or for somebody is not seen to be enabling them. And so we work with people. And, and community, they talked about community, and of course that's one of GROW's essential features. <coughs> um, what can I say? I, I mean, one thing I'd like to see from services um, and Patricia Deegan says this, that what we need from services are for them to be holders of hope when we can't hold it for ourselves, but also when we can to give it back to us. Thank you.